Welcome to Decode. Uh, this is the podcast where we talk all things um, headless WordPress and modern web development in general. And we're back this week uh, with a fun episode um, talking about Gatsby version four. I'm Kellen Mace and I'm joined by my co-host Grace Erickson. How's it going today, Grace? Doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to have our guest on and that is Alex Moon. So he's uh, the two-time guest, maybe our first. I don't no, no, I think second. I think I think Jason Ball's on twice. So you're you're neck and neck, I guess, with uh with our very own Jason Ball. But um, but how's it going today, Alex? It's it's going really well. I'm excited to be here and talk Gatsby. Nice. Yeah. So um, as mentioned, Alex was on once before. Uh, if you look, you know, in our um, back catalog, you'll find an episode called Rendering Patterns with Alex Moon. Um, so that one was really cool. I thought it's uh. You may want to review that or give that a listen if you, you know, have trouble distinguishing between all these types of rendering. You know, these days with modern JavaScript frameworks, it's easy to get lost in the alphabet soup, you know, with CSR, SSR, SSG, ISR, and now DSG that we'll talk about today, right? It's, it's those, lines get, those lines get very <laughs> blurry. So, so, yeah, that episode, like, would, would help you um, kind of distinguish between uh, all of those and make sense of those rendering patterns. And I think it's actually a good lead in to uh, what we'll talk about in this episode because Gatsby version four is chock full of like really interesting changes, including some to, you know, um, yeah. where and how rendering happens. So I'm excited to, to get into that. Um, so that I think will uh, kick things off. So in Gatsby's V4 release, they talked about how um, they made it 10 times faster. Can you talk about some of the changes that contributed to that increase in speed? Yeah, there's a um, <laughs> good question. Uh, there's a couple of things that they did. Um, we'll get into all the rendering pattern stuff they added uh, in more depth, but that was one aspect. Uh, so that helps with build times. You're no longer required to statically pre-render everything at build time. And then the second aspect was how they run, uh, qu they query data when they generate that, that those uh, pre-rendered pages and the related JSON files. Um, and that was by uh, implementing parallel query running. So as you query Gat Gatsby's data layer, that's happening um, much more parallelized. Uh, and I think they did some other kind of under the hood changes um, Excuse me, we'll edit that burp out. <laughs> um, also under the hood, they changed other things uh, related to the data layer and they've implemented a lot of uh, uh, JavaScript workers, node workers under the hood to uh, create some parallelization there. That's very cool. Um, do you know if those changes, the parallel processing stuff you talked about, um, does yep. that require Gatsby Cloud or that's just like in Gatsby it, itself when it's running a build, it does that parallel processing now? Yeah, that parallel processing is in the open source like core JavaScript um, libraries. Yeah, that's like I said, between the workers and then um, I think how, they, how they're batching those queries. I don't know the specifics of how they implemented that, um, mm. but I know it's, yeah, I believe that's just generally uh, will improve build times. Yeah. Well, it's very cool. Not only for production, right? If you have your content editor makes a change, it, that'll be quicker, of course, but, but even local development, right? If you're running, yeah. running a build there, uh, that would just be quicker for users. So that's super cool. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so the more exciting thing though, I think to talk about is um, the new rendering pattern stuff, you know, things that were introduced, as you mentioned, namely uh, deferred static generation or DSG. So Gatsby has, thrown yet another uh, term at us for uh, an option for, for rendering. Uh, and it's very interesting. One of the criticisms with Gatsby um, when it was younger, when Gatsby was a bit younger and it was one of the first uh, React frameworks to really popularize SSG or static site generation, where you would you know, pre-render all of your pages, you know, distribute them across the CDN, and then anything you need to fetch on the fly that could just be done on the client. So you'd see a loading spinner momentarily and you fetch something and pop it in. And after your React app hydrates on the client, then you'd have the full power of you know React and it would look and feel like a single page app. So you kind of, it was kind of at the best of both worlds where you had the speed of you know very quick static initial, initial page load, but it still is this application where you can do you know um, 
do appy things uh, on the client. Uh, one of the criticisms though, with despite all that goodness, one of the criticisms was build times, you know, because at the time it was like Gatsby had to statically pre-render 100% of your pages, right? So what if I, if somebody has, you know, thousands of um, blog posts or whatever else, how long is a build going to take, you know, that kind of thing. And Gatsby, um, you know, knew this was an issue and worked very hard to uh, implement um, incremental builds, which I think was the first step in really cutting that down. Now it's like, you know, your, your very first deploy ever may, may be pretty lengthy, but they're, they're on out, you know, if you're only um, updating parts of the site, um, then they would be much quicker. So that was like a huge improvement, but now they've gone a step further and we have deferred static generation, which I'd love to compare to um, the incremental static regeneration or ISR that Next.js has. So Next.js has this thing where you can statically generate a page and then tell it to regenerate that just on a time interval, right? But my understanding is DSG does not rely on a time interval. It's even more sophisticated, you could argue, right? So, so tell us all about that, yeah. Alex. Like, what's DSG all about? Yeah, so yeah, as you said, uh, yeah, build times have kind of been the long first spot in Gatsby's uh, side. They've done a lot of work, uh, things like par parallel query running um, and a lot of other things in the last couple of years to improve those build times. Um, incremental builds first came to Gatsby Cloud and uh, they, I think with Gatsby V3, I don't know, sometimes semi-recently, they, they were like, hey, we're releasing incremental builds into the open source. Yeah. And they rebranded their stuff in the cloud as Gatsby Cloud Builds. Um, that was a little bit of a rebrand, but it, it definitely did help the open source world too. Um, there was some stuff that they just kind of was behind a flag. They finally shipped to open source. So um, mm -hmm. they're not, you're not going to get the sub 10 second build times you get in Gatsby Cloud in their open source project uh, by doing you know those. But with a warm cache, um, those are still much, much improved. Uh, in open source now. Um, so yeah, so then uh, they, uh, I think a lot of people I've heard have been like, oh, it'd be great if Gatsby had SSR or um, something like ISR and uh, Gatsby has been dragging their heels and last summer they finally announced, hey, we're, we're going more dynamic, um, TBD. Well, uh, me and some other folks in the community um, got tapped on the sh shoulders shortly after that Gatsby camp and they were like, hey, We've got these features. We want to talk to you about them, get your feedback early on. And that was ended up what's now called DSG and their SSR features and the get server data function. Um, and yeah, so DSG is, uh, it's similar to ISR in a couple of ways. So uh, as the name would suggest, it's deferred static generation. So instead of being built during runtime, uh, the Gatsby build actually, uh, it, it's aware of that data that, that um, I mean, it's aware that the page needs to exist, uh, but it defers its generation of the HTML and the page data dot, uh, dash JSON um, file till the first request comes in for that page. Um, so the, the perfect use case of this is, you know, uh, you know, if you got, if you got a hundred blogs in your archive, let alone, you know, a thousand or 10,000, the chance that every one of those posts is being regularly uh, trafficked is really, really low. Um, and so the idea is like on a very simple level, you could say, uh, you know, only statically generate the latest 10 um, mm -hmm. maybe, but you could also theoretically hook that up to like some kind of analytics platform that says, hey, these are my top like 100 most trafficked posts. Um, so you could do the first 10, you could, statically pre-render the first 10 plus those other like 100 most popular. Um, you could do some yep. cool things with that. But the point is you defer that, you don't incur that build time cost. And then only if that data is requested, is it rendered and then cached. And so mm -hmm. other than that first person that hits that cold cache, everyone else gets the, the same identical performance as every other statically pre-rendered site uh, or page. And so, yeah, so you can peer into that. So uh, differences between ISR and DSG. Um, so because of Gatsby's data layer and the fact that it's aware of what data is on what page, uh, Gatsby can track what data, uh, when that data is updated, what pages it invalidates. Um, 
that drives their, uh, their incremental builds, but it also helps uh, with, uh, you know, all this cache and validation stuff. Um, so when you Gatsby prefetches at build time, all the data that will end up in that deferred page is fetched into that Gatsby data layer and cached at build time. So the, basically what I'm about to describe here is what we call atomic builds, right? So mm -hmm. the idea of an atomic build is like nothing, once it's built and deployed, nothing can change. Like changing something in the CMS doesn't all of a sudden break your app. That app is gonna work till the end of time um, you know, through the nuclear holocaust and everything, nothing's ever going to change because <laughs> Netlify is that good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so basically Gatsby, the biggest difference is Gatsby said, no, we don't believe like Next has never done atomic builds, right? Because they're SSR, they've been primarily SSR focused. If you do their static exports, yes, you do get an atomic build. Um, but that's never been their primary driver. Gatsby's all been like, hey, we're on the Jamstack train. We're, on, mm -hmm. we're all about these atomic builds. Um, and we don't want to break that with this new rendering pattern. So as long as you're doing DSG, uh, and you, as long as you hit that route, uh, assuming there's no cache there that's caching that, every time you hit that DSG route, it would render the identical thing till the end of the time. You could delete that post out of your CMS, right? You could change the content. It would be the same thing because all the data mm. it's fetching and using to render is cached in the data layer. Um, so that's a benefit in one way because you get an atomic build, but it's a downside in that um, you can't just add a new route, right? If you add a new blog post, you actually have to run a build. But that is also where incremental builds come in, right? That takes a whole three seconds on Gatsby Cloud, at least. Um, it's significantly mm -hmm. reduced. So uh, this is literally just uh, helping reduce that initial build time uh, for the full site, if you do a code change or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how DSG's big difference is that that data is basically invalidated based on data changes instead of a specific timeout and therefore making mm -hmm. it atomic um, per build. Yeah, that is super interesting. Um, it seems very powerful to me, you know, when I, when I um, look at Next.js and just that, this idea of like, well, we'll just regenerate it on an interval in case maybe it's changed. I who knows, we're just going to do it every 10 minutes anyway. You know, it just knows less. You know, it reminds me very much of some of the comparisons I draw sometimes between uh, traditional WordPress and then, you know, going for a headless approach. And, and one of the benefits I often mention is the fact that these new build tools are so smart in air quotes. You know, they know they can trace the whole component tree and know um, what uh, JavaScript and what styles are being imported, you know, to which components, and they can build you this bundle that's, you know, tailor made to just that particular route on your site. So instead of shipping this style sheet where, you know, 80% of the styles apply to other pages and don't really even make sense for the current site, like you might in traditional WordPress, now you have these, you know, optimized builds per route. You know, it's just, it shows the power of your, the tooling that you're working with you know, knowing, like I said, or being smarter about having more knowledge of, you know, what exists yeah. in your app. So this feels, you know, Gatsby to me, the um, unified data layer, being able to know where the data is used feels like another step in that direction where it's like, it knows where all the styles are used, all the JavaScript is used and all the data itself is used and can, yeah. you know, uh, do cache and validation when those things change. So it seems very powerful. Um, and another, yeah. so, so we compared it to next um, incremental static um, regeneration, ISR. And another comparison I think we could draw is to um, something that uh, Netlify announced in the not too distant um, past, and that is their distributed persistent rendering. Uh, yeah. We have a po past podcast episode we did with the Netlify team. And they gave me a little explainer you know, on that episode, like what their DPR um, thing is. And it seems very cool. It brings something similar to this to other frameworks even where you can have you know when a yeah. build ha happens you know it wouldn't it wouldn't generate certain pages until the first request comes in for those however it's limited because unlike gatsby it doesn't know where all the data is lives you know my understanding yeah. is all the invalidation it's able to do is just has a new build happened yet you know and as soon as a new build happens yeah. then we just invalidate everything from the last one 
and you know start you would start fresh so then any yep. new request after that point you, now you'd have to recache all these things and the way i understand yeah. it correct me if i'm wrong alex the way i understand dsg yeah. is like it would these pages you've generated would just transcend atomic builds if they're unchanged is that accurate like if i have an about page on my site and the data from build one is exactly the same as build two like would that same page just stay in the cache and continue to be served up it's a really good question um unfortunately for gatsby that's an implementation detail of gatsby cloud so um mm -hmm. like because gatsby doesn't provide a um gatsby doesn't provide an open source production quality server mm -hmm. to run gatsby on it, like on a, your own node server um and for those listening that are like but there's th there's this command called gatsby serve um <clears throat> i beg you never use that in production <laughs> yeah it, just uh there's some I, I've I've had multiple like Gatsby maintainers tell me not to use that, and then I went and read the code myself, and I cringed. And yes, you can go on Gatsby's website, and under the Gatsby DSG documentation, it says, "Oh, if you need to do this in production, you can run Gatsby serve." I have complained to them about that. I have told them to take that down, <laughs> and it's still there for some reason. Um, don't use mm. that. Is it, uh, are you saying that because there there are performance bottlenecks there? There's huge performance bottlenecks. Okay. There's literally like if you're doing Gatsby functions, for example, mm -hmm. uh, every time you hit an endpoint for that Gatsby function, it doesn't like already know the code it needs to run and run it. It does a lookup um, to figure it like calculates where that file should exist based on okay. like uh, the functions.json that, that gets built at big time. It goes, okay, where's that file that I need to look up? It calls a delete cache on the require for that file and then requires the file. So for those who don't understand what we're talking about, like node uh, common JS, like node imports, uh, they to optimize requiring of files, they cache like the JavaScript files as they're required. So that if you have to re-execute that same file, it's mm -hmm. much, much more performant. So every time they're like, oh, let's delete the cache just in case it's outdated. Well, that's great on a dev server where they copied this code from, like running Gatsby develop, that, that needs to be there, right? So if you edit mm. that file, you get the latest version. But for some reason, they copied and pasted that into the production version and didn't bother changing it. And so it's like little things like that, um, that is just like, it's not, um, it's just not there yet. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it works, uh, but it's not a great experience. Uh, it's not very performant. Um, I don't know that they've even bothered thinking about security. Um, I know it doesn't, another great example is it doesn't do any of the um, caching headers you need. Um, oh, wow. I know I put in a PR for that a long time ago. Uh, and I also don't remember if they've ever bothered merging it. Um, mm. So should Gatsby yeah. serve continue to exist just if you want to like serve, you know, view a production build on your own machine? Is it useful for yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's a perfect use for it. And, oh, and yeah. that's what it's there for. Yeah. Um, uh, for those who are into Spout Kit, uh, you'll, you'll be familiar with Spout Kit's, uh, um, I think it's a uh, preview. It's like yeah. Spout Preview or whatever it their is. CLI is. Yeah. That would be like the equivalent. They're like, yeah, this works, but never ever use this in production. Like mm. you, you have to actually go give SaltKit your adapter for how you want to run it in production. And that's the production server for it. Um, so yeah, there is a couple plugins um, that do like Gatsby plugin, I think Node.js or Express, whatever it's called, does like, mm. um, I, I maintain one called Gatsby plugin Fastify that uses Fastify um to do a production quality node.js server for gatsby in, in open source and just on your own node server and um, that would be how you would want to solve that problem um wow this was sorry this was a, a rabbit hole i don't <laughs> even remember where, where we were oh, that's um, quite all right it's very interesting stuff um yeah so we're talking about dsg and then i, I oh, implementation details yes yes 
So you asked about whether that file sticks around. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's no open source implementation of that, I can't. I can tell you on Gatsby plugin fast by the answer is no, right? Okay. Because um, actually, at this point in time, Gatsby plugin fast by doesn't even provide a caching layer, right? So, um, which is fine because most of the time, Node.js shouldn't be your edge server. You should at least have a CDN in front of it, if not like Nginx that ha handles like, like probably have Nginx as a like a reverse proxy sitting there doing server side caching and then your CDNs doing global, your global caching. Um, so there's like multiple layers of caching in there that doesn't mm. matter. You don't need, you know, Fastify to necessarily know how to cache that content. Um, so yeah, the answer is like, they might be on Gatsby Cloud. Um, but on a normal build server, you rebuild, it's not going to regenerate those pages. And I mm. guess they're maybe get served out of the cache, but you probably need to make sure you, they're probably not going to happen because HTML and uh, JSON and Gatsby should never really be cached for very long anyway, um, mm. which is why you need a server side cache um, for the DSG in specific um, outside of your CDN. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was just kind of kind of curious um, what they would do, you know, in that case if between builds certain pages had zero changes, would they just keep serving up the same HTML file? At the end of the day, it's probably not a huge ordeal, especially compared with the Next.js's ISR, where it's like it's it's hitting, you know, it's hitting your yeah. your backend like every five minutes or ten minutes to keep it fresh. Compared to Gatsby, it was like you know, it's like we hit it once the first request that came in after the last build. Yeah. Like yeah, that's still seen, pretty minimal, I've seen, you know. <laughs> I've seen ISR freaking tank servers. Um, yeah. For different reasons, but yeah, because like you get all this content that's just getting invalidated, but um, preloading can tank uh, a server. Like, well, it depends on your backend. It won't take the generally won't take tank the node server. It'll tank like the WordPress backend because um, all of a sudden yeah. you got 30 links on a page, and all 30 links need to be pre-rendered simultaneously, and WordPress just doesn't keep up can't, can't <laughs> yeah certainly well cool so dsg is very interesting um it can just to summar summarize what, what, what you said um right it yeah. can make uh builds a lot quicker since instead of statically pre-rendering every page under the sun you could do a subset of those and then say yeah. i'm deferring the hence the name i'm deferring the rest until that first request comes in so that's super powerful and then the whole um you know invalidation piece of it you know, invalidating certain pages when their data changes and swapping them out, which is very uh, powerful as well, instead of it being, you know, time-based. So that's all very cool. Yeah. I, um, I will say uh, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, there's a gentleman on a, one of the Slack summon that was like, hey, I, I, I thought DSG was going to save me a bunch of time. I've got 7,000 posts and pages on this site. Mm -hmm. I deferred Actually, it might've been more than that. It might've been like 10,000 and he was deferring 7,000 of them. He's like, I expected this huge win and it's the exact same hour build time. Um, and mm -hmm. I don't know the exact problem there. Um, uh, the initial conversation we had and what I initially saw from the Gatsby folks that responded, uh, but then I think they were gonna get on the phone with them and figure out why exactly. But the initial thing I saw was the fact that the, the slow thing in his build wasn't necessarily all that rendering, like that maybe saved a couple minutes, um, hmm. but on an hour build time, a couple minutes is nothing, <laughs> right? The, uh, at the end of the day, what was actually taking a long time was fetching like all that, those like 10,000 nodes out of WordPress and caching them in the Gatsby data lake. And that was actually the bottleneck. And so he solved a potential bottleneck but it wasn't his mm -hmm. ultimate bottleneck. So, um, and I don't know, he might've been running his Gatsby server or his WordPress server just totally underpowered. And so it was just struggling to respond to requests at, at an efficient rate. Um, yeah. it, it could have been something completely unrelated to how he had implemented something in Gatsby that was weird. Um, I don't know, um, mm -hmm. but it's, there can be niche use cases where um, yeah. if that's not your actual bottleneck, it doesn't save you too much. So, so um, why? So help me understand it. So why would the Gatsby service request those like 10,000 nodes or whatever? If it's only building a subset of pages, wouldn't it only get the ones it needs for those? 
and not the right. Again, because of the atomic builds, it has to fetch all that data at build time. Oh, to determine right. if there are changes. Yeah, and it has to know uh, that those okay. routes exist. So like, all right. it, it has to be aware of those routes existing. It just, when it goes to look for it, like it goes, okay, it's not already on the file system or however they do their logic, right? It's not on the mm -hmm. file system, then I need to um, do this DSG route. Um, so it has to be aware of that. So it has to at least get like all the posts and their slugs and you know their IDs or something. Um, it yeah. could theoretically maybe postpone the rest of that data, but again, how they got to the loop works is, and because they wanted to maintain atomic builds, they still have to fetch all that data out of WordPress, get it into the Gatsby data layer and cache that um, for the later rendering. It's just the HTML render that's being de deferred. Um, and I, I think there is some like image rendering and stuff that's deferred as well. Um, but the point is like, it's it, it, it doesn't fix all the bottlenecks. Like the good news is, if you like run a Gatsby build, like you can look down at all the timings and it's like, you know, querying, you know, data from WordPress took, you know, 2000, 3000 seconds in this guy's case, like it just some absurd amount of time, like HTML render, like three seconds, you know, this took 20 seconds and it's like, okay, well, like your HTML render is fast. Like mm. DSG is doing its job. <laughs> um, it's these other different stages of the Gatsby build that we need to worry about now. Yeah, I see. That's interesting to me. I hadn't thought about it that way with the atomic yeah. builds and needing to check to see what changed yeah. and what needs to be in. So like you, you were asking about DPR, right? So DPR is not going to be atomic, um, or at least as far as I understand it. Um, I won't be pretend to be a DPR expert, right? So um, like Gatsby is probably never going to work with DPR. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if they try to support that. I would be doubtful I think that it they is, do. I think it is atomic because it's like a build happens and then the first request, you know, generates new pages and then a new but build the, happens and all of the rest are invalidated. And then right. new requests. But if isn't that two days or two minutes, like after you do that initial build mm -hmm. and like, so basically like every framework that wants to support this has to have some kind of like render function, like give it a route and then yeah. it generates the assets. Um, and so basically what happens is Netlify goes, oh, I don't have the static file. So I'm going to call this render function that, that this, your framework provided me. Yep. The problem is most frameworks, they don't have this data layer, which means uh, they don't have, they couldn't like cache all the data from a database or a CMS at build time. They didn't mm -hmm. already make those data requests at the point that render function is made it's going to reach out to the database, get that data. So you could theoretically like break something in your database between the time that your initial build happened and the render function is actually called two minutes I later see. or two hours later or two months later Got it. Um, for that route. And that's what I mean by it's, once it's, once that render function has been called, that data will never change. Correct. In that sense, it's atomic, but it's I like, see. it's like, weirdly only partially atomic <laughs> <laughs> uh, which uh big announcement netlify just announced they acquired one graph which yes. is a pseudo competitor to the gatsby's like data layer except like that's all they do right um so tbd on whether that continues to be true um <laughs> I, it, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that um they always do good work so absolutely i agree very interesting. All right. So that was a lot, a lot of discussion on DSG, which uh, I think it's deserving of, like, it's a very interesting and yeah. powerful feature. I, I think it's a, overall, I think it's a huge one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, ne next up on our list uh, of things we wanted to cover with you is server side rendering. Uh, we talked a little bit in the pre-show about how uh, it seems like um, the two front runners for React meta frameworks, uh, Gatsby and XJS keep stealing good ideas for, from each other. And I love that. It means, you know, both are, are uh, pushing each other to, to get better. It reminds me a lot yeah. of like other, other things in tech. Like if you look at iOS and Android, you know, it's like they, for, for a while, these, a while, you know, uh, a while in the past, these framework or these um, platforms were quite different, but then they, I feel like for a few years, they kept stealing each other's good ideas. And now it's like, you know, they're getting, getting more and more similar. So I think a similar thing could be 
similar comparisons could be made with um, Gatsby and Next.js, where you know Next.js was one of the first frameworks to popularize server-side rendering, but did not do you know SSG, did not do pre-rendering your pages. We should Gatsby clarify hits the scene. React server-side rendering. <laughs> we can thank ASPX.net um, and True. PHP for for server-side rendering as a whole. Good point. Um, yeah, the reinvention <laughs> of of SSG. The reinvention of JavaScript server-side rendering. Yeah. yeah, good call out. Yeah, so Next.js was doing React server side server side rendering first, uh, but not static, you know, static render pages. Gatsby hits the scene and says, "We we we can generate your pages statically, distributing across the CDN, so you get that lightning quick, you know, first build faster than you could if you did Next.js." And then after that point, they both kind of st stole each other's ideas. You know, Next, yeah, had, you yeah. know, added new ways of of doing that static, you know, pre generation. And now yeah. here we are Next. with Gatsby four seeing this announcement of SSR. So what does that, does that look kind of similar to, to the way yeah. Next does things? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, basically what on a page components uh, in your, your pages folder in Gatsby, you can export a, a get server data function. It's basically just like get server, uh, get server data. Get static props or get server side props? Get server props. That's what the next one. Yeah, get server side props or whatever it is in, in next. Right. I'm right. gonna blank yeah. on it here. Um, uh, get server data, yeah. You get um, a series of context objects. You know, you get a context object that provides things like parameters and headers. Um, I'm gonna blank on all the things uh, that is in that. Uh, but yeah, so you get access to all those things. Um, and you can respond accordingly. You can, and also they do a cool thing. Uh, instead of having to like import fetch at the top of your file so you can use fetch, um, oh. they will do like dependency injection effectively on the server side render. Cause obviously fetch is just there in the client. Um, but so you don't really have to like import it. So they just like make fetch available. Like you can just access it and just use mm. fetch. Um, you don't have to worry about about how, how that works and where you're getting fetch from. Um, yeah, so you can just uh, like within that function and then you can return an object that has props, a status and, oh, of course I'm gonna forget the other one. Um, anyway, something else. You guys can is look up errors? the docs. Uh, the status is where you would throw errors. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all right if we don't have all the specifics. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so basically, yeah, you, you can get your context, you return an object, um, and that's run by, oh, uh, headers. Duh. Headers is the oh. other one, because, you you know, if you want to, you know, set cache control headers, if you want to do, you know, authentication headers, anything like that, um, that's where you would return those. And then Gatsby bundles those up and sends it back to the... Um, and so the cool part is, so because Gatsby has the SPA, and I Next might do this too, I'm just not as familiar with the internals of Next. Um, if you do a client-side render of an SSR page, like, right, so you just follow a link to an SSR page, it mm -hmm. doesn't force um, the HTML to come from the server, right? So you're not gonna get that like pause and yep. then a render you're going to Gatsby's client side package, the uh, page-data.json file, which will have the results of the SSR. And that's what gets in, like fed into the props of the, um, so it just has to fetch that JSON file um, yep. from the server, which is super cool, right? So uh, it, it's, you, you get still kind of the, the, the fun of the client side rendering and you just fetch mm -hmm. that page-data.json and uh, you're off to the races and your, your, your page is rendered. But uh, if it takes a second, right? So like there are examples on their sites like fetching from like a dog image API and just rendering it every time you refresh the page, right? It renders a new image of a dog. Um, but the quote, uh, using SSR doesn't exclude still accessing the Gatsby data layer. So you could put a lot of static data into that same page and just have a small element of it be SSR. Um, if that's what you need. Interesting. Would Gatsby like cache the rest then? Of the yeah, page? the rest would be cached just like oh, with, cool. if any other static build um, or more like DSG. Um, mm. 
in that, that case, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, very cool. So this, um, so the way I understand it or the way I've always thought about it is like, uh, next JS, because it, you know, was the f first framework to popularize, uh, react, um, server side rendering. It had to have a dev server running all the time, ready to receive those requests. And I'll nuance that by saying serverless, of course, exists. So it, you know, if you host on like, like versus, you know, Next.js's parent company's platform Versal, for example, they'll like spin down, you know, those, those things and the request comes in, spin yeah. back up. So it's, it's, you know, may not truly be always running, but it's always available at least, whether it's yeah. server full or serverless. So anyways, um, with Gatsby announcing that server side rendering is now import, uh, is now supported is that a, the similar situation where you could have like a either a long running node process that's always available for those requests or otherwise you know use serverless to do that yeah again that's implementation detail um so yeah like my, my gatsby plugin fastify it's a long running node process that's what it's mm -hmm. designed to be used as um though i haven't tested it you could probably use it in a, fu uh, a function um but yeah, like by default, it just comes with the CLI to start a node process. And um, yeah, you would, uh, what they do with Gatsby Cloud, I would actually would guess is they're using some kind of workers or yeah, more like a function is where they're do what they're doing with that. But um, that's an implementation detail of the server, which is, but generally Gatsby Cloud, which means we don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, shrouded in mystery. Um, so one, one thing I'm interested in, learning about is if this changes anything for runtime requests fired off from the client. Cause I've, I built a number of production, you know, Gatsby apps in the past and really liked a lot of parts about them. But one of the kind of pain points for me has always been um, if you want some, you know, some data to fetch it, data fetching to happen at build time. So it's available yeah. there in the page, but then you need to fetch more on the client. Let's say the, the you know, let's say the user hits like a load more button. That always yeah. felt a little disjointed to me because I was, you know, in Gatsby, I was using its, you know, um, its static, you know, querying mechanism to grab this data at build time and inject the yeah. first whatever, 10, 10, po 10 blog posts or whatever it is into my page. But then the client, if the user hit load more, then it's like, well, okay, now go over here and use this, you know, Apollo client or Urkel or whatever query I've built up yeah. and Just don't start at the beginning. Different. Client start completely the beginning, different endpoints. Off, like... Offset that by nine. The first nine are already there, so offset it by nine and start counting a little later, and then load in the results. You know, so oh, has any of that changed? The... Oh, it sounds like you had the benefit of both Gatsby and your endpoint both using offset-based pagination. Just imagine <laughs> the love that happens when Gatsby refuses to Cursor. do uh, cursor-based pagination, <laughs> but that's what you would need to do on. Yeah, um... right. That'd be painful. Uh, yeah, I that has been a long uh, running complaint of, from a lot of people. I remember um, yeah. one of the first syntax episodes. Uh, a great podcast, shout out uh, yeah. to those guys uh, that they ever did, or I ever listened to. Not that they ever did, was when they were talking about like one of their yearly like Gatsby updates. Mm. And I think one of them was like just learning about Gatsby. And he's like, oh, this data layer seems so cool. So can I like spin this up as my own server and like request data? And right. they're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I've talked to them, uh, some of the maintainers a couple of times and they're like, yeah, you don't need to do that. I've never heard a valid reason, which is like, and I was like, well, well, how about infinite scroll? And they immediately were like, okay, well, there, there's a good valid one. <laughs> <laughs> like all right well you got one valid one now um so yeah that's uh but good news on that front i i, I don't know anything i was reading the docs for Gatsby before v4 release and they were talking about parallel query running mm -hmm. and how it took a lot of under the hood changes um and rewriting gatsby's data layer to be able to run on its own and interesting wink wink nod nod that will make some cool things happen in the future is basically the way they put it and i was just like hmm they've gotten the memo <laughs> or i hope they have so yeah i mean i think that would be a huge win for gatsby of uh yeah being able to separate out that data layer and 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 query it at um from the server side render or from from the client even um yep. to get that data um because yeah you just like hey well 
I didn't need this at build time, but now I want I want to do some infinite scroll. I want to do these kind of other use cases that are just a lot simplified if you have access to that same API. Um, so yeah. Right. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That'd be pretty cool. It seems like the trick there would be um, to uh, to do it in only one HTTP request. So let me like state what I mean by that. So when a like when a build is happening on Gatsby's server, wherever that's it's yeah. it's running there, if you're requesting some you know some some Gatsby static data via its GraphQL API, uh, its layer, it can then make a network request to the WordPress backend, let's say, get the data back and then pipe that into your app. So that's you know one round trip network request to get that piece of data from from WordPress. You know, so now I'm thinking, okay, the page has already been delivered to the client. Now it's running in the browser and now we're doing the infinite scroll. Now we need more data. Yeah. You know, you would want to still only have one round trip where it would, you could still make the request, you know, using Gatsby, the functions Gatsby provides, but it would realize, oh, we're running in a browser. So we'll, you know, format, format the request uh, in the proper way, send it straight to the proper source, you know, in this case, the WordPress backend. And they get the data back and pop it into. So it instead doesn't going, even need to do that. Instead of doing a, it doesn't so, need to do that. Uh, let's assume we're going to make a couple of assumptions here that they still want atomic builds. Okay. Right. So if you create a system that like, like you could create a system like somehow rewrites that request into like WP GraphQL, but like if we're talking WordPress here, but then you have sure. to have the Gatsby data layer has to know to translate between its system and fetching that one piece of data from the UCAP. They're never going to do that. That's AST hell right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so, and that's then try, even trying to get people to support that uh, in their in their source plugins would be a nightmare. Um, so what they would do is they would still be caching at build time, all that data from your CMS into the Gatsby data layer. So, you can, and that's just now, you know, just like in Gatsby dev, you can go to like underscore, underscore, underscore GraphQL and mm. like mess with and request from the GraphQL API on like a live basis. Like it's basically the same thing. Like there's an endpoint that your, your client side or your server side um, can talk to directly and mm -hmm. fetch new data directly out of that Gatsby um, data layer, um, at least in theory, that's how. I would imagine it working. So like, yeah, you, you, you can update your database and that data, data doesn't change, but now it can just say, okay, now I need the next 10, 10 I need the next 10 um, posts or whatever, you know, as we scroll down this page. So Yeah, it seems like you're copying large portions of your database and putting them on the Gatsby server in that case. It's like, yeah, it just has to have all which, posts because if they keep in yeah. scrolling forever, like- and that's you just that's have to have them all. The benefit and the curse of Gatsby, like that's why Gatsby there layer can have a consistent interface and a consistent yeah. schema. It's not because every database every, for every CMS has the same schema. It's because mm -hmm. when you write a source plugin, you take the schema and you tell Gatsby like, here's how you fetch all posts, mm -hmm. um, go do it. <laughs> and then stick that into the schema. Um, so yeah, you're literally copying a database every time. Um, the... If we don't assume atom atomicity, an atomic build, um, mm -hmm. though there would maybe be like other ways to do this with like checkpointing, you could have a long mm -hmm. running process, right? Because like Gatsby's data layer already have a, has to have a conversation with the CMS and like the CMS sends a webhook and says, hey, I updated some data and yeah. Gatsby's data layer then knows how to go and just fetch that piece of data that's mm -hmm. changed. That's a huge part of incremental builds. It's called uh, incremental data fetching is in, just updating that one piece of data and the Gatsby data layer. Um, if we didn't assume an atomic build, then we could say, well, if I host my thing on Gatsby Cloud or if there was an open source version of this, right, I could start a node server running that Gatsby data layer and it's constantly syncing data from the CMS or other points and there's never that like huge refetch that ever happens has to happen so now when I run build that entire sync down from the database that you know for this guy's case was taking him like several minutes to do and slowing down his builds a bunch like no mm. that doesn't need to happen anymore it's already synced into the Gatsby data layer. we just have to do that parallel query fetching now that we've just optimized um, yeah. 
And it would be interesting if there was a way to like, if you had a time, like a time element to Gatsby, how Gatsby starts data, like when you made a request, you could say like, make a request as if I'm at this point in time. Um, mm. If you've ever worked with time series databases, this is how they work. Um, but yeah, so then it would it wouldn't give you all this new data it's synced. It would only give you like the old data. But that <laughs> seems that seems even more complicated. I don't know. But yeah, there's stuff they could do there that would be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, interesting. Okay, so for now the story of fetching on the client remains unchanged, but SSR itself opens up you know new possibilities. So. But that's a great transition into the next question about React 18. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell us all about that. So part of the what's new in um, Gatsby v4 uh, blog post, you know, that, that they released was React 18 future proofing. So do you have any insight there yeah. for what that means? Yeah, I think most of that um, landed actually in 3.9 or maybe 3.9 was also like the three ver version of four. So it, it landed simultaneously in both. I don't mm. remember. I remember seeing a great presentation. Um, so uh, the biggest thing that they have done at this point is uh, support React's alpha, which is, as we mentioned, actually, did we mention it? React 18 beta just came out, was announced a couple of days ago. Um, so they have implemented support for the alpha slash beta version of React 18. And that's about all they've done. Um, I don't know, I don't follow React that closely. Um, I know there's some various animation stuff and other performance optimizations that have happened. Um, so the biggest thing is uh, React Lazy, uh, aka Suspense support, um, yeah. which has always existed on the client side, but has never existed on the server-side rendering aspects of React's um, core libraries. Um, so with the new React streaming server, it can do Suspense. This is going to be one of the largest changes to Gatsby we have seen in years. I mean, DSG mm. is great. <laughs> SSR is great. Don't get me wrong. Because um, right now, so everyone's other favorite like reason to hate Gatsby is use static query versus page queries. Do you even know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm seeing blank stairs. I remember doing both. I've, I've used yeah. Yeah, that hook as well as passed in props to my page. Yeah. yeah. So um, page queries can only be done on page level components. Yeah. Right. And you, once you get down into individual components, you can only do static queries. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember all the reasons, the exact reasons uh, you can't do those, but you can't. Um, yeah. And next is the, the other for the page component. Yeah, yeah, Next is very similar. Like you can only use get, you know, static props and get server props at the page, the page level. level. Yeah. Um, so what this enables basically, uh, the biggest reason is basically uh, the way get static query works is it's not like run, um, it's not run like during the SSR build. It's run during the webpack. Webpack actually like takes your GraphQL query, pulls it out, runs the query over here and like replaces that basically uh, with the Gatsby magic of, you know, mm. page data. That's like, it puts that data into your page uh, data.json and uh, it gets like rehydrated. It's basically static JSON writer um, when it fetches that JSON file. So, right, like it's not, it can never make that query on the client side. It can never, um, but what this enables is basically it enables React to go, oh, we have a request being made and like pause its rendering, do worry about this request and l not have to force Webpack to do all that work um, out of band and uh, in that build step. And so uh, group, WordPress or WordPress, uh, Gatsby basically will no ha longer have these two separate methods of requesting that mm. only work in like specific situations. Okay. And uh, which has been a huge deal. Like every beginner to, to like the other big issue with um, static queries is you can't pass any kind of variables because, oh, yeah. like I just said, because that query isn't run by SSR with the context of those variables. Yes. 
it has no idea what those variables are when it runs the request. Now that that can all get moved back under the like the React world, um, it will have that context and you can now pass variables to those. Mm. And because of that, they no longer need two separate methods to do these, fe these data fetches. Um, they can just have one like use Gatsby query or whatever like hook and you could use that everywhere in your app. It was, it's pretty cool stuff. There, I'm sure there's a video mm -hmm. out there of some one of their devs doing it. I know I saw it during a, like a live presentation. Um, maybe we'll mm -hmm. find it and attach it to like the notes on this post on this uh, recording. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, that's a big thing I'm aware of that will be coming and that I believe you can actually try. I think when they did that presentation, they said you could actually try it out um, if you, you're using React 18. Okay. And um, so just clarify me uh, in the, like what's coming in React 18 uh, blog, yeah. blog post on the React blog, um, the terminology they use is a, a new streaming server renderer is coming. Yeah. That is different than React server components. Yeah, is so it? React server, <laughs> yes, it's definitely different. Okay. So the, the streaming server is what's enabling suspense on the server side. If I, I understand it correctly. Okay. React server components are the ability to say like, this is only ever going to be rendered on a server and will never be shipped client side. So it, yep. that, that JavaScript that builds that component never gets shipped to your client. So that right. you, it's going to be a huge win for shipping less JavaScript. Unfortunately, um, that got pulled out of React 18. So that is not my understanding is that it's not shipping with React 18. Um, hopefully it doesn't go the way of suspense and take five years for them to ship it. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, at least last I heard, it was not shipping with React 18. Yeah. Okay. Good clarification there. Um, and we've made a few comparisons with, with Next. Like, um, Grace, did you want to ask more about that? Yeah. So we've, we've kind of talked about like some of the ways that Next and Gatsby are the same and different with um, things we've talked about, but can you like give a summary of like what the biggest differences are between the two now? Yeah, so um, I'm a big proponent of like developer choice, right? That's that's what I that's been kind of my gripe with Gatsby over the years is like I, I agree with you guys. Gatsby's or like I like Gatsby. I've been in that community for so long. Um, I'll, I'll complain about it as much as the next guy, but I also like it at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, like they've been really stuck on the static train. And I'm like, guys, there's valid use cases for SSR. There's valid use cases um, for doing some of these other things and having things like dynamic um, static or deferred static generation. Um, and so they, and I think they finally heard that, you know, people like me, I, I've not been the only one. The community has been very vocal about that. And, um, Whereas, you know, and, and Nexcon is the reverse direction, right? They started at SRO and went, went static. And what this all enables at the end of the day is if you decide one of your routes needs to be SSR, you no longer have to switch frameworks, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, which means we're no longer like stuck with choosing our framework. Um, well, back in the day, it used to be like, if you chose PHP, you had to do server-side rendering. You know, we're no longer stuck with that, right? We can We can choose JavaScript and get, Client side, server side, or uh, you know, static rendering, um, and now like the fact that all three of these frameworks have different options, we can choose this at like a route level. Um, and so, like back to like your your ultimate question of like next versus Gatsby, um, what do you know? What does your team know? What is your like? What are you familiar with? Uh, what do you, how, what's your hosting situation look like? Um, what do you feel more comfortable in? Is the Gatsby data layer valuable for you? Great, go with Gatsby. If you just hate it and you don't want to deal with it, great, go with next. Like at the end of the day, performance wise, they're going to function really similarly. Um, they're both, you know, connected in with the React 18 working group and whatever that becomes going forward, like they're all going to be shipping features pretty close to each other. So, yeah. Does Gatsby version four play well with Faust.js? Oh, the good old Faust question. Um, yeah, so I was actually playing around with this the other day because uh, we were talking about this and 
The short answer is yes. The long answer is kind of. Um, <laughs> uh, really what we need to do, uh, I don't think it'll be too much work. We, we need to release a Gatsby plugin um, to connect in some things for Faust, uh, just some, you know, plumbing basically, uh, to make that a little smoother. Uh, the client side rendering I've done actually, that's a pretty easy setup. Um, uh, if you want to do client side rendering, you know, replace your call client with something like uh, GQD or Faust, um, then that's that's uh, a fairly easy setup. Uh, SSR is a little more difficult because you're. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, what I haven't gotten to is what caching looks like for that. Is it only going to be in the HTML? Or can we get Gatsby to, you know, add that data to the, the page data.json files? Um, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm going to keep playing with it. Hopefully, I uh, might even talk to our Faust team and be like, hey, we should ship this. Um, <laughs> see what we can do. So yeah, if you want to do uh, client-side rendering stuff with Faust, you could. Um, you could probably even use it in the SSR, like, um, so I, I just use SSR twice to mean two very different things. So let me explain myself. Um, React SSR is what's used to do static rendered React sites. It's just, you have to know all the routes ahead of time and then you sit and like hit it. Um, and that's true, like you can use PHP, right? To do static rendering, you just have to know what routes to pre-render. Um, so when, when I said the Gatsby SSR is hard, what I meant is Gatsby static builds. Um, if actual Gatsby SSR as in get server data function, uh, you could use it uh, fairly easily within that too um, to fetch your data um, uh, on that SSR render. But yeah, it's possible. Uh, we don't have anything official out yet. I'll, I'm sure I'll keep playing with it and maybe we'll get our Faust team to uh, release some packages and some examples. I know I'd like to see that happen. Well, very cool. Uh, and for for anybody who's listening who um, isn't aware, Faust.js, you know, is our um, JavaScript framework, and it's kind of built in layers. So there's like a core uh, package to it, and then there's an additional package for use with Next.js. So if you yeah. choose to use it with Next, then you can use both of those, the core package and yeah. the other one that gets you some some pre-built, you know, React hooks and and other niceties for uh, working with with WordPress. Um, but otherwise, if you're opting for another framework um, like Gatsby or SvelteKit or Nux or something else, uh, you can still use part of Faust, and that is the core package. And that's what you have There is a, um, there out. actually is a React package sitting in the middle there. Um, oh, yeah. Pretty limited, but okay. that is what I'm using with Gatsby. And if you were like on Create React app, you could use that as well. So you're just going to have to do all the any plumbing on your own. <laughs> so. Get ready to become a plumber. Yep. Yep. Get into those Gatsby SSR and browser APIs. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we should probably wrap things up. Um, this is super uh, informative to me, though, uh, to get a little more familiar with, um, in particular, the DSG and SSR features and learn whether or not it changes the story for client side data, data fetching. Um, I'm still waiting for yeah. that. Well, we'll uh, uh, yeah, I stay think, tuned. Um, I don't know. I, I've seen some good moves at Gatsby recently. I, I, I know a lot of their team fairly well. I've either actually worked with them or, or just know them through um, regular conversations and being involved in the community. And I, I see some good stuff happening over there. So I'm confident in Gatsby's future and what and the work they're doing over there. Um, it'll be cool to see where they take it. Well, very cool. Um, if uh, folks want to follow along with you and the work that you're doing, uh, in the Gatsby community and or, you know, for WP Engine, like where can they go to do that, Alex? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm on half the Slacks in the universe, so uh, <laughs> you might find me there. Um, but most importantly, at uh, Twitter, I'm uh, Moon underscore Meister. Moon Meister. All right. Well, thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And thanks for listening, everyone. I will catch you in the next episode. <laughs>